this is a demonstration of multipass ultraviolet blood irradiation and major auto hemotherapy with each pass 50 to 60 ml of 110 micrograms per ml are administered and each pass achieves about 6000 gamma of ozone MAHT. Four passes are adequate and enough to give or administer 25,000 micrograms of ozone. Very useful in dengue, HIV, monkeypox, other viral infection reducing viral load rapidly and produces miraculous results. You can message the above number for further details if required the video showing detailed step by step procedure is shown. First we take 1 ml of heparin and in a special IAOS vacutainer bottle the syringe is inserted the vacuum will ensure that the heparin is drawn into the bottle now half ml of heparin which is about 2500 units 1 ml is 500 units half ml is 2500 units this is put in a special latex rubber free ozone compatible blood transfusion system set and the set is shaken to prime the set this will coat the interior of the set to make sure that the blood does not clot either in the system or in the bottle. Now we open an 18 gauge butterfly and attach the same to the end of the transfusion system. Now is a very important step. We have ultraviolet blood irradiation system. The young man here has a viral infection, mostly acute viral gastroenteritis, suspected dengue infection, but tests are negative. Now the butterfly is inserted into the vein the instant the blood enters the tube the end of the set is pushed into the vacutainer bottle and the blood set is opened the IAOS bottles have got high vacuum and the blood will travel upstream and enter the bottle. Ultraviolet protective goggles are given to the patient and the operator. The staff are instructed not to look at the UV lights which may be harmful to the eyes. A 50 ml syringe ozone compound compatible latex free syringe is taken, a bivalve or a three way is attached to it, the regulator is kept at 1 by 16th of a liter to produce 110 micrograms, the syringe is connected to the machine, we have to wait till the ozone smell comes and then only allow 
the syringe to be connected the syringe this is a real time video without any editing without any stopping and you can see that 1 by 16th of a liter the push up of ozone at 110 micrograms per ml or 110 gamma is a little slow we put 50, 55, 60 ml as much as a syringe can withstand without popping out. Now we attach the bivalve to the syringe, lock the bivalve so that the ozone is locked. Then we attach a needle, bend the needle to 90 degrees. The needle is now pushed into the machine and allowed to suck. The bottle is inverted. The ultraviolet lights are started and appropriate level is attained to ensure that the blood is fully irradiated inside the chamber before it enters the patient's body. We, this each pass takes about 6 to 7 minutes if the flow is full because we are only passing 50 to 60 ml. We have to wait till the blood level is low enough in the bottle that it would not immerse the diffuser. Once it is done, the blood inflow is closed and the bottle is extracted out of the UBI hanger. taken out of the hanger, direction of the bottle reversed and held by the operator while we take a bivalve and attach it to the needle. We leave the air vent in position, lock the bivalve to make sure that no vacuum escapes from the bottle while we create the vacuum. We have tried a tube, the length is just about adequate and this is connected to the vacuum part of the bottle and pushed into the bottle. This will produce vacuum. However, here we have gone into the side where there is a blood foam. So, we have switched the tube to a longer tube and ensure once again that the bivalve is closed, push the vacuum tube into the blood, into the push the vacuum tube into the vacuum container. container uh, the vacuum is started and then the blood is allowed to flow again. You can see the blood is rapidly flowing into it. We have to add a very small dose of anticoagulation and once that is done, we will allow the blood to fill up in the bottle that is a diluted heparin 0 0.3 ml in 5 ml again sucked in. Once we have collected another 50 to 60 ml of blood the vacuum is removed and we collect ozone in a syringe 
this is now injected into the patient so into the vacuum trainer bottle as we are drawing at 110 micrograms which is only 1 by 16th of a liter the duration is long the vacuum produced might not be adequate for going automatically some pushing may be required we now lock the bivalve and remove the cylinder remove the syringe alone and hang it back into the UV bottle open the transfusion set and allow the blood to be transfused slowly once again when the level of the blood is reduced or the bottle is nearly empty that will be the time to do the next pass in this manner we can repeat multiple passes we can go up to 10 passes if you are using low dose ozone on the contrary you can use about 4 passes if the ozone dose is a little higher and we must keep the tube vertical to stop the blood foam from entering the vacuum machine, vacuum part of the IAOS ozone generator. We wait till the entire lot of blood is drawn again and ozonize it and transfuse it. Once the blood is transfused, we detach the transfusion set and wait for the blood to go back into the patient's body and once it is back in the body we can detach the tube it is very important step to pad the injection site nicely and tightly wrap with elastoplast bandage so that there is no accidental leak because the blood which is now heparinized is little thin and if this padding or bandage becomes loose for the next 4 hours the patient may suffer from bleeding a dynaplast or a stretchable adhesive plaster is attached to the venisection site and that concludes the procedure. If any ozone therapist or a qualified medical practitioner is interested in learning about these procedures, you are please requested to send a message to the above number and appropriate details will be sent to you. Thank you. Have a nice day.